that uh, we could have a weaker dollar um, regardless of how the uh, number comes in. Uh, remember last month we came in at uh, 559,000. Uh, still a relatively robust number. We're expecting, oh, well, again, depending on the survey, Roy, the Reuters poll has around 700,000 uh, for the headline number. Uh, somebody saying sell. I don't untold stories. I don't, know, I don't know what he's trying to say, sell there, Patrick. But uh, hello, Patrick. Hope you're well. Um, and uh, there we are. Nice, Patrick. There he is. Sell what? Your house? <laughs> Uh, anyway, so let's see. Uh, I say we've got um, a three-month rolling average of four five hundred forty thousand. That's key for many analysts and um, <coughs> excuse me, many observers today. Um, unemployment expected to fall. The more important, oh, not the more important, but the one that gets overlooked quite a bit is the U uh, six unemployment, the wider measure of unemployment. That's still sitting over ten percent. So if that comes under ten percent, that's a positive uh, tick in the box. Um, but there's all this uh, sort of uh, conflicting um, conflicting uh, news flying around. We're still well short, obviously, of the pre-pandemic level. 6.9 million uh, Americans are still registered as unemployed. There's some technical issues that uh, may have come into play today where people have been misregistering uh, themselves as far as the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics is concerned. So, again, that might have something to play in things. Um, from the vaccination point of view, obviously, the America's doing very, very well. 150 million plus of 330 million people vaccinated. They're getting to a point now where uh, they're getting to a, like the sticky point now. The people that the hardcore of those are people that don't want to get vaccinated won't ever get vaccinated. There's obviously that hardcore. And then there's the people that are just worried about it, worried about the fact that they feel it hasn't been tested enough and all that sort of thing. So that's again, sitting in the background, the background of the, the vaccination rollout, but that's going relatively well. And again, that's sort of been priced into this big move we've had in the dollar. Dad, Sam, good afternoon to you, or good morning. Um, good evening, in fact, isn't it? So, um, uh, hope you're well. Uh, Untold stories after night, euro, dollar, I guess that's what you're talking about, selling. Uh, dollar's been uh, on a move. It's been moved up this morning. We were at uh, 92.70 dollar index, euro, dollar, uh, three month high, dollar yen, 15 month high. So we'll bring the charts up in a minute. Um, but just let me get through this uh, introduction to the, the non farm payroll. So um, the other key thing uh, is obviously earnings. I've we've banged on about earnings uh, a lot. Remember the federal minimum wage in the United States is $7.25. And that's been a big issue uh, with obviously unions, with people trying to go back to work. So there's this talk of this 15. Uh, uh, dollar an hour minimum wage that hasn't that's yet that's not on any statute book anywhere uh but i was reading this morning in a i think i get it was in a Reuters report from uh i can't remember where the website was particip uh, i can't remember where i think i wrote it down. yeah porchedjobs.com if you go to porchedjobs.com uh apparently on that that site there for american um hospitality workers restaurant workers there's jobs there at 27 dollars an hour 27 dollars an hour uh, for the hospitality sector. So there's a key uh, dichotomy or paradox between, uh, you know, job openings that can't be filled and people that still don't want to come back uh, to work or are reluctant to come back to work. So a few things hanging on that. Obviously, it's the summer again, so we're into May, June time. Um, uh, and uh, there's the issue of uh, schools reopening in the fall or in September. Uh, and so, therefore, the female sector, particularly uh, of, the, of the employment market, is being uh, kept on the sidelines. So there may be a return there. Uh, and then there's also the obviously the wages, uh, the, the, the checks, the stimulation stimulation check, the stimulation checks that the uh, government have sent out, three hundred dollars a week. Uh, that's going to end in September as well. So that might sort of give people the kick to actually start going back to the market and start looking for jobs. So there's that sitting around. So really, there's lots of chatter that, you know, they, this uh, June number, the July number, maybe the August number, obviously very somewhat irrelevant until we get past uh, Labor Day in the United States, when everything gets back to normal after the summer recess. And uh, we start to look, in, look into the uh, fourth quarter and the end of 2021. So uh, the issue is, you know, how long the Fed can wait? Will the Fed, they're talking about talking about tapering. They've got another meeting in July. They've got the, obviously their Jackson Hall uh, meeting over the summer as well, big talking shop typically. But uh, as far as the markets are concerned, as far as uh, you know, uh, uh, the currencies are moving, we've had this 
very volatile. Uh, let me see if I can find the higher time frame for the dollar index. Uh, you know, very volatile dollar. We had a very strong first quarter. We had a very weak with the dollar index. On. Actually, let's just use the euro as an example. Uh, let me just get rid of uh, me. There we go. There we go. We see that. So this is a euro here on the 50 minute. If we just go up to the daily time frame for a minute, you can see. Here, this was the end of uh, this is the end of of March. So April, April, June, uh, sorry, April, and May, we rallied. June, we de uh, we've decreased. So we've had a really strong June uh, for uh, the dollar euro. Here was you know up to one twenty two, one twenty two, one twenty three area, and we come all the way down here to one eighteen. I said three months lows here uh, at the moment. So dollar can it hold these gains again we'll we'll see as the as the data comes out so estimates today are really really wide uh, uh 376 000 was the lowest uh, for the Reuters poll and then there's pantheon economics up at uh, one point over one million remember we've never got to that one million number uh that's been much anticipated in the spring uh so again just see how that number comes out where are we We're still a few minutes away so See how it all bands out, but it's really for me and, and for many uh, watching this market, it's really a relatively quiet uh, summer potentially uh, with really the real data, the real grinding data uh, coming in September, October time. So see what these uh, wages are like. And just on the wages and, and an example again of, uh, of what companies are doing to try and attract people, there's all sorts of incentives kicking around now, anything from $100 to $30,000 I saw uh, again, uh, on that uh, note I was reading this morning, uh, for, to attract people, to get people, to retain people. Uh, so not only, you know, to that, that headline, $27 an hour uh, for re uh, restaurant workers, but up to $30,000 30, welcome bonuses for people uh, to move jobs. So again, see how all that comes out with regard to incentives. Uh, so just a quick recap, the uh, headlines expected around 700000 That may be a bit on the top, top side. Remember, we missed last month. Uh, also, the, the other key thing to check is obviously the revisions that come out today as well, the, uh, um, uh, the revised numbers for previous months, because they can sometimes be quite quite choppy as well. Uh, and um, obviously the participation rate uh, around 61.6% and the work week uh, at 34.9 uh, as well. The other key thing that seems to be playing out in the United States job market in particular is that there's people that seem to have taken early retirement or moved out of the whether it's early retirement or people just don't want to work, you know, in the lucky position to be able to not want to work anymore, given that, and the theory behind that is that we've got this rapid rising stock market, lots and uh, the vast majority of Americans are invested quite heavily in the stock market, something they do a lot more so than other uh, countries, but very heavily invest in their own equity markets. So we've got these record high equity markets, so people cashing in that uh, benefit and also this record high uh, again movement in the uh, housing market so uh, people selling you know more expensive houses downsizing taking early retirement moving to smaller cheaper cities or uh, you know different places of, of, of the of the uh, uh, americas to to live so um there's you know up to two million people have come out of the of the jobs market as well so that's another twist on the numbers as well so uh which has been driven obviously by the pan pandemic so anyway let's have a look how the numbers go lots of questions in here as yeah uh, as expected good afternoon everyone muzzy good afternoon hope ishmael good afternoon hope you're well um let's have a look. lots of questions in here so uh Tanson, good evening um uh, what's uh can we figure these i'm um, just joining yeah it's again the headline is around about seven hundred thousand. uh employment rate rise to nine point percent versus 5.8 percent so the numbers are coming out now unemployment has actually gone up it was expected to come down so it's coming at 5.9 percent that's negative for the dollar one would say uh, and the headline number let me just check my uh, calendar here uh, i've got slow here uh 850,000. so it's better than expected so the headline's coming at eight hundred fifty thousand. Uh, participation rate is right on the nose at 61.6%. Uh, U6 unemployment, one I've been watching, is come under 10%. So that's a quite a big tick in the box. So although uh, the employment rate for June has gone up to 5.9%, the Y, the U6, has actually come down over that big, big psychological 10%. So that's a positive number, certainly for me. The head, obviously, the, the 
um, um, uh, rate itself, the headline rate is 5.9%, but the wider U6, 9.8%. Earnings are in line at 0.3% per month. Uh, the year-on-year -year number, I can't see the year-on-year -year number here, but it was uh, relatively high. That's coming online. Um, last month has been revised down to 0.4 of 1% from 0.5 of 1%. Uh, uh, the last month's payrolls have been, again, downgraded by 16,000 to 583,000 from uh, – no, what am I talking about? It's been upgraded, so that's a positive one as well. So we've gone from 559 to 583 so we've gone up uh 24,000 last month so that's been revised higher uh an average sorry i've just come it's here it's being delayed for some reason the average hourly earnings is now at 3.6 percent uh and the average hours weeks at 34.7 percent so overall that's a positive number the only surprise is perhaps the unemployment rate ticking up to 5.9 percent but that is ameliorated by the wider u6 number coming in at um uh 9.8 percent so uh again a fairly strong uh number well in fact a, a excuse me a, a good number uh seven eight hundred and fifty thousand from an expected seven hundred thousand so uh a beat to the upside for a change we've had, we've had a couple of off misses so let's have a look what that's doing to the uh dollar so uh immediately euro uh, dollar weakens on the number we're at 118.84 uh, here's the numbers coming through uh, and being uh, uh, taken uh, on the chin there. Uh, we've also got building permits at the same time, dollar CAD, so 14.1%. So 850,000 is the headline. Uh, unemployment's ticked up surprisingly, but I'll say that's ameliorated by the wider U6 number uh, coming in at 9.8%, uh, on that key 10%, and uh, average hourly earnings for the year, 3.6%. Bit of a tick, a bit of a uh, miss. Uh, but uh, that's relatively positive uh, for the dollar. Euro dollar here is bouncing back. Perhaps Mrs. Lagarde said something as well. Mrs. Lagarde's in a, a question and answer session here as well. Uh, and I've just seen uh, Tesla inventories as well. We've just gone across to the Reuters terminal there. Tesla inventories have missed by three by uh, 3,000. But anyway, what is the Dow doing, says Muzzy? Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at your question. So let's just bring you back here. So um mm, uh, who else is selling the euro dollar car uh let's have a look so expect we uh so the dollar uh the dollar basically uh has weakened from here so we've got euro uh rising here we've got dollar yen coming down from that 15 month high we're at 111 but still relatively high 111 to the downside we've got sterling uh rocketing here 137.75 here for uh, the dollar so let's have a look so the conclusion is it's a relatively strong number it's above expectations so that's perhaps pushing <coughs> uh, expectations that the fed might start talking about talking about actually talking about tapering rather than just talking about talking about tapering if that makes any sense uh, so this rock strong rally we've got the daily time frame here for cable for instance we, uh, this strong rally we've had uh, for dollar here this is the daily time frame for cable uh, the pound against the dollar. So the strong rally we've had uh, for the uh, dollar over the last week or so uh, is starting to cool a wee bit in uh, cable, trying to find a flaw here. But the 200-day, for instance, on this particular chart, the 200-day moving average there at 136.70 here for cable, and we trade at 137.75, so we'd like to get back over 138 is my conclusions, Mr. Pepperstone, uh, my friend. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Graham say bias. I can't tell you what to do, my friend, but really, uh, the trend has been uh, low all day. This is the 15 minute chart for euros. You can see euros reacted positively here on the 15 minute chart. The one hour chart is still moving down, but a big move up. Um, uh, and the daily time frame, uh, as you can see, big long uh, wick to the south. Uh, on the back of the uh, um, uh, uh, NFP number, uh, so that's uh, relatively weak for the dollar. But on the higher time frame, euro dollar really needs to breach back over that 200-day moving average there at 119.38 if it's going to move to the upside. Still relatively weak, so that's still uh, uh, sort of aired to the downside. Uh, MACD is starting to turn around here. This one-hour, uh, sorry, daily time frame is going to so. Uh, big news item there. So euro, so a weaker dollar is what the markets are saying. Lucas is asking about gold. Muzzy, I'll come to the USA 30 in a minute. 
gold. So gold. Oh, got a white chart here. Uh, so gold here. Oh, let's just uh, bring this down to the five minutes. How gold reacted. So big leap here for gold uh, on this five minute chart. So 17.95 at the moment. Uh, if we've got the hour chart, you see it's recovered. Uh, if I insert, uh, let's do a different template because that template is a bit. A bit bright for me, so here let's just put this black one on. There we go. Uh, so again, this is Euro. Uh, Euro. Um, no, I'll put the, the um, uh, daily spreads on here. So this is uh, today. We've uh, sort of moved up from this low we had uh, down here at uh, seventeen fifty. This big test that we when we shook out here on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We've moved up from the lows of Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, seventeen ninety. Uh, as far as the daily is concerned, it's still a big old shakeout in June uh, for gold. We went to test 1750, uh, 1750 uh, and we've recovered three days. So that's looking like uh, three white candles there on gold. So gold moving up. But again, the resistance on the higher time frame sits at the key 200 day moving average. It's all the way up there at 1807. So over the psychological 1800. So gold remains relatively weak. Four hour is showing some signs of life that would have triggered long for you. Uh, on that chart, a weak one there. You could have entered stronger here uh, yesterday. Uh, it's um, yesterday, yeah. Yesterday month's been moving up a bit, but really a four-hour again. Four-hour uh, gold traders would like to. I'd like to see a break of that line there. That's seventeen ninety-four. That's where we've ran to and stopped. Uh, and then the daily two hundred hour is there at eighteen or seven, and the two hundred period on a four-hour is eighteen seventeen, so even higher. So um uh we are looking to um that's a, that key there for gold one hour time frame we go down again that's been moving up quite nicely from the shakeout yesterday so it's been positive all day up in down it's gone long again there it's broken over the 200 hour here and it's moving uh immediately to the upside uh on the announcement we'll see how that fares because that's really a re for me it's a really re relatively strong <clears throat> Uh, number, uh, but we've had a very strong move on on the on the uh, on the the dollar pairs. So non surprisingly, some profit probably been taken. The other thing to bear in mind as well, guys, is it's obviously a long weekend here in uh, in the United States. So um, positions being squared off for the end of the month earlier this week, and then uh, positions perhaps being squared off for the uh, the uh, Independence Day holiday on Monday. So a long weekend in the United States as well. So watch uh, volatility later on as well um alicia hello um uh, strong surge sent dollar weather came as a surprise it wouldn't momentum there we'll see we shall see so good afternoon everyone um uh yeah uh, well that was the that was the the, the report um because i can't say your name sammy it's uh, it's been relatively uh, well, it's in the immediate reaction. It's got this one minute chart. So the immediate reaction was uh, a rally up. And now we've cooled down a wee bit. This is gold to the same thing for it's just got the minute chart. I don't normally look at these charts, but you see the immediate reaction of the num of the numbers coming out was a dip initially because it was uh, it was a beat. So the dollar got stronger and then immediately uh, it's gone the other way on the view that, uh, you know, it might push the Fed uh, to action early. So we went, we've gone to. Uh, 11856 for uh, sorry, we went to 118 or six to 11856. So, a big 50 pip spread in a few minutes, and that's the volatility of non farm payroll. So, be careful, you know, if you're trading in the higher time frame or if you're in or out. Uh, but again, uh, that's gone, that remains sort of bid there on that one hour uh time frame. It's 15 minutes. Let's uh, just change, change the template, different, different template there. So. 15 minutes going back to one hour one. Uh, so euro still relatively weak. It's looking to move up today, but uh, uh, the trend is still you know to the downside. There you go. There's a four hour. See the impact. That it, see, it seems a lot of volatility at the time in the, the short time frames when you're trying to trade these assets. But here in this four hour candle, uh, which is literally just uh, just started. I think, no, no, it's just about to finish, isn't it? At four o'clock. So here it's sort of all. You no, know, it's just doesn't. You know, you can't see the significance. Of, uh, of uh, NFP in this candle here, can you as a four hour trader? So, again, it's all about your time frames, guys. And, uh, you know, what seems lots of volatility in the low time frames can be quite quiet 
in the lower time frames okay so keen is talking about that so again guys i can't tell you what to do you don't interpret what to do but i'm saying uh, as far as the uh, data is concerned it's still relatively strong for the dollar uh, the only uh, fly in the ointment might be that unemployment rate rising to 5.9 percent i can't see the detail of where these jobs came but the expectations were it was going to be obviously in the hospitality the leisure sector was going to tick up as well so half the have people finally gone back uh, manufacturing with some questions over uh, manufacturing staff uh, given the, the lack of skill some skills in particular sectors uh, education government sector um, you know education we come at the end of the school year there's been a churn there uh, so, so again see how that pans out when we look at the uh, uh, when we look at the details, so uh, but that was a, still a relatively uh, strong uh, number, right? Harry's asking about uh, sorry, Harry is asking about cable. So, cable here the downtrend remains very much inset on the daily time frame. The four hour uh, is also still down clearly. Uh, you can see we're it needs to break uh, 138 to the four hour chart stopped going down basically the one hour chart is a bit different because we've had the reaction to the uh data the one hour looks like it's put in a floor today uh here uh on this particular chart there 137.37 so 137.37 nice round number and it's looking to move up uh so it's had a strong move up so if it's going to move higher cable it needs to break that 50 uh 50 hour move now it's that blue line there at 137.87 so 137.87 is uh, a break to take this higher but we've already obviously had a strong move and if it holds over the uh 137.60 area which is the midpoint of this bollinger band the 20 hour moving average that also remain looks relatively strong uh keen if it holds it closes this hour there on that time frame obviously in the lower time frames 30 minute was bid up uh, the 15 minutes big old strong candle there's that floor at that 137 um uh 137 we identified in the uh before the data came out so that's bid you know the 15 minute traders looking good we're over the 50 period moving average need to break the next resistance our next target would be that uh 137.87 where the 200 hour sits um at the moment so um yeah dollar dipped some is it a buy the dip dollar uh difficult to uh difficult to say that to be honest um but the dollar you know in the higher time frames has certainly been moving uh, uh to the upside so it's a big catch up the, the, the other key uh thing there was the, the revisions uh, let me just go back to the uh what's my comment on the revisions the revisions were up but not something to you know write home about so um uh well the last one was actually a bit significant that would have raised the average uh three month average from uh 450 uh probably quite significant so four five eight three uh was the revised number uh for the main number from five five nine so that's as i said earlier that's a twenty four thousand extra gain so it's a bit of a revision it's not huge uh but the big beat at eight hundred and fifty thousand from the seven hundred thousand expected was to the upside it was quite significant to the upside so see if that gets revised and down or up next month as well so healthy healthy job uh creation in the united states the issue is is the growth is the uh growth in earnings continue to um, push through some would argue uh it's starting to show signs of weakness because the the year on year number from last month was uh revised down to only one tick but 1.9 percent. so it's back under two percent for the main number the expectation of a big leap this month because of the base effects from last remember this time last year things were getting to we were, we were starting to move out the, the big uh, uh move down in uh, expect in uh, uh equity markets in march uh, sorry march and april uh, and may and and we're into the summer and things seem to be uh, turning a bit of a corner uh, not necessarily we were opening up but um there was an acceptance that uh, this was a real pandemic so um you know people were, were reluctant to be in the marketplace so uh earnings have, have leapt up but again they've missed they've come in at 3.6 percent compared to 3.7 percent so that's a bit of a weakness and then the actual unemployment number coming up to 5.9 percent uh from uh, an expectation of actually falling to 5.7 percent 
from last month's 5.8%. It's only a, you know it's only a couple of ticks between them all, but it's it, that's all that's a negative uh, uh, number as well. Uh, but I said for me, uh, the one I was watching was this U6, the underemployment rate, the under uh, employment rate, not the uh, empl unemployment rate, but the underemployment rate is at nine. It's under ten percent, nine point eight percent. So that's a positive number that'll get lost in all the noise and uh, numbers of the headline um, today. Trade balance in the United States, as well, uh, by the way, uh, was uh, seventy one point two billion. Uh, better than expected, uh, not as bad. Oh, sorry, negative 71.2 billion. Uh, it was expected to be 71.4 billion. So there we go. Uh, as I've been speaking, you see the gold sterling uh, cable, the 15 minute period there, rejecting that 200 period move at the moment. Um, so let's have a look what we've got on here. Uh, Facebook. Uh, Uh, da, 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 da. It's a lot of spam on Facebook, unfortunately. Um, is, uh, da, 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 da. I don't want to see now. It's like I've got three to nine. Uh, da, spam, 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 buy it. Oh, dearie me. It's all about spams and um, um, they are losing their uh, uh, regulation in the UK have pulled out of uh, regulated buy-ins. Uh, right, so let's have a look. So we go. There's lots of questions here. I'm sorry, I'm uh, trying to keep up with you. Uh, Keenan, we did uh, Sterling. There we go. Sterling's, that's the numbers we talked about. Uh, Sammy is saying, uh, Stuart, please give an analysis on the gold and dollar yen in terms of correlation, how the MFP report might influence the direction of the market. Well, the direction of the market, um, it's all to do with what the Fed does next, uh, Sammy. Uh, and uh, this is uh, overall, I mean, the headline number was strong, it was a beat. Uh, but there's some definite signs of weakness in there with the unemployment rate being high next week. It's only one tick, but, you know, it's only one month. Uh, the, the, the wider uh, U6 was better, um, but uh, uh, the uh, earnings looking a bit of a, it's sort of a, bit of a, a dip down. But overall, it's still a, quite a healthy number. If uh, is the question, obviously, is the, uh, let's just use cable here. You, you asked about cable, didn't you? Um, uh, dollar yen, let's choose yen. Uh, yen's been particularly weak. So uh, this move down, this sorry, move down, this move up here um, yesterday and today to a new 15 month high for dollar yen. If you've got the weekly chart, you can see what I mean by this uh, high here, all the way back to March, again, the beginning of the pandemic last year. So dollars up, dipped, and then rallied again over 1100. So really, on the short term, looks a bit overbought uh, or getting overbought. Uh, it did when it got first got to 11, but 111 becomes the key support area for dollar yen uh, next week. Now, see where we're close today, obviously, but uh, 111 is a key number, and then the big psychological 110 below that. But so dollar yen uh, has moved up uh, on expectations again. The, the more hawkish, obviously, this clearly all to do with uh, when the Fed tilted to the hawkish side, uh, and we um, this was this rally here, not back here because it's a weekly chart. Um, uh, as we've moved up and it's just you know that continues you know it, again if you're a dollar yen trader uh, on an end of day basis the nfp number is just another bit of data and you'll still bid because the highs clearly as you can see here uh on a, you know the highs are getting higher the trend is still very much set the lows are getting higher so we've gone over 111 we're getting a bit a bit uh on the high side but rsi is at 65.7 uh, it's sort of dipped hasn't actually got in here you see you know the old-fashioned uh 70 is overbought on with you when you put your rsi on so as an end of day basis this just keeps going up uh it's a bit rocky uh but it's going down it's going up They're just that simple in one simple indicator obviously you know uh, i've got the macd on here anything but rsi is still showing that's okay um hold of 111 so the highs getting higher lows are getting lower the trend is still very much set for me you, you know you could argue that you're at the top of the channel uh what's my little channel indicator as well let's do that there you go oops whoops uh that's my little line gone there is uh you know you, you put your through there we're sort of a bit you know poked out of that channel so that's very more positive you could argue uh bottom of the channel down here somewhere uh, so yeah it's it's big you know for me on an end of day basis there's the 20 day moving average um all the way down there at uh, 110.35 
First question mark would be a break under the five period EMA, which sits at 111.12. And then the, uh, the tw oh, hang on a minute, that's the, uh, that's the nine period there at 110.90. So 111, big round number so far going forward for the end next week, um, my friend. Uh, so look, uh, lots of rubbish coming in here today, unfortunately. Uh, Silver said, I guess it's a tick tock sell for gold. Well, uh, in fact, it was the other way around, wasn't it? Gold uh, moved up uh, and then <laughs> uh, moved down at the moment. So who knows? But that today, gold has been uh, to the upside. It's over its 200 hour moving average, which is today's support, which sits there at one at 1782, uh, 1795, the key uh, daily resistance, because that's where the 200 day moving average sits as well so 17 sorry 18 or seven i should say sorry at the 1795 is the four hour uh, uh top here from uh that was earlier in the week wasn't it 23rd so 1795 is our resistance which we've already run into um today uh daniel saying cable looks like it's going to uh retest before strong bear well again it's all about your time frames daniel uh, I don't know what time frame you're looking at, but that's been a big sell-off for cable um, down. Uh, so there's still a cluster here, you could argue, uh, which would take us back. So under 137 again. Um, so 137 is the big uh, round number finding support. But the 200, see this little line here, this is the 200-day moving average sits there at 136.70. So Quite significantly, you know, 30 pips under the 117, 137 area. So that trend, another one that remains very much in play to the downside, um, even with, uh, excuse me, even with the non-farm payroll today. So uh, uh, so down very aggressively, retest relatively aggressively, but and then we've broken through that low. So again, you'd want to get back over 137.98. So 138 is really uh, where you need to get back over here. Uh, this is the daily. Uh, if this is going to show some strength, uh, let's put that, make that a different color. It's bringing me yellow. There we are. Uh, so 138 uh, to the upside. If we're going to start moving, if cable's going to start moving up. So let's have a look at some of these questions here. Uh, Chico crypto. What on earth are you talking about? I have no idea. But um, very good. Right. Um, Omar, uh, Swissy. So Swissy, uh, again, would have probably been quite aggressive. Let's put a different template on that. So it's, uh, oops, that one. Let's do the one we've been using today. Uh, uh, so um, daily. There we go. So big recovery for the dollar here uh, from this uh, 89.35 low uh, at the uh, beginning of June. Uh, big strong rally, uh, as you've seen with uh, all the dollar crosses, over 90, over 91, over 92. Uh, 92.36 is where we trade today. Uh, so again, that remains bid. So over the 200 days, so the big support uh, for the Swiss franc. Remember the Swiss National Bank still... Uh, talking about the Swiss franc being overvalued. So 91.40 is where the 200-day moving average sits. Uh, the 20s all the way down there. Uh, so they're a bit out of the line because of this big move down. Uh, but that's your support, 91.40. Uh, and again, the five-day and the nine-day period moving averages uh, way below where we are at the moment. So uh, close below uh, 92.28 today, maybe deemed a bit weaker. But, you know, that, see how that five period has held all of this rally uh, for the latter half of June. So if the dollar is going to roll over, uh, obviously watch the Swiss franc, but the Swiss franc has weakened along with the yen as well, given this rise in uh, equity marks. Somebody asked about equity marks before and I didn't get to it, did I? It was um, right on the button. Muzi, I don't know if you're still here, my friend. Sorry about that. Uh, Dow Jones, let's have a look at the Dow. Um, actually, let's pull it in from here. So I've got a new platform here. So the Dow, the USA uh, 30. Uh, let's look at the cash, the futures. Um, so USA 30, just for that, I don't want the futures, I wanted the normal um, cash, that one, the USA 30, let's pull that in here, in case of uh, one So this is uh, the Dow, uh, end of day, uh, dip down, uh, actually let's just insert the, 
Uh, you should see how the 50 day moving averages worked uh, well uh, uh, on this one. Uh, let's make that 50. Uh, make it a bright blue, dark blue. Can you see it? Uh, let's make it a nice blue number. There we go. Oh, you probably can't see that, can you? Um, make it a bit thicker. That colour's not showing up, is it? Let's uh, make it a. Uh, is that going to show up better? There we are. So this thick, this blue line is our 50-day moving average, and we've been back over it. We went under it quite significantly, uh, but this break here, uh, as we got to the end of June, we're moving higher uh, for the uh, Dow. It's lagging a bit. Uh, the other two, we had an all-time high um, close for the S&P 500 yesterday. Uh, the Dow's playing up, but again, see the dip, and we're over, and we're over, and we're rallying. Just uh, new um, all-time highs yet to be pushed out for the Dow, but uh, 34,800 is where we want to get to, but it's, it's moving up quite nicely. So the Dow remains um, to the bid to the upside. Um, um, good afternoon, Wayne. I hope you're well. Um, to the upside and Muzzy, my friend. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, Alicia, hello. Thank you for your uh, uh, insight. You were with Andrea yesterday as well. Lots of uh, stuff you've written here. Uh, I don't know if you're trying to get people to come and take your uh, signals, but it's very uh, in-depth and very uh, uh, nicely written. I'll give you that, uh, if nothing. Uh, what are you saying here about 11 to, yeah, 1120, uh, 11.77, level of focus on for, uh, dollar yen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, uh, you can see that uh, dollar yen. Uh, but uh, there's just lots of spam on Facebook for some reason. Um, uh, you're all backpacking each other for your Ethernet as well. There we go. Uh, so, um, Muzzy, uh, basically it remains bid, uh, the USA 30 here on the daily time frame. The support, uh, the reason I put the 50 day moving average on is to show it's clustering with the 20 day moving average. So, big. Fat support there at 34,270, where they, they cluster there together. Uh, it's not necessarily positive um, uh, if the, uh, the well, the, the 50 crosses the 21. So we want to turn the, we see, see the 20 turning back up off the 50. So see where we go. So it, um, uh, this V shape, again, is not a necessarily positive move. So it needs to break and move significantly over all time highs if this is going to continue to move up otherwise that could quite easily move down quite aggressively as well so but really and then the whole scheme of things this big rally uh the bids of the, the dips have been bought but the next the last move down here for the usa 30 was more significant than any other moves down uh so far this year so that's got people a bit twitchy remember we had this big churn out of the tech stocks into the industrials and into the, some of the cyclicals uh, and so the Dow benefit quite significantly, but we've had this turn back to the tech stocks, the undervalued, what, uh, what some are saying, undervalued tech stocks. Uh, ahead of, remember, we've got the earnings season coming up in a couple of weeks as well. Um, so really want to see the Dow move above this 34,800 level uh, uh, to continue this bid to the upside. Otherwise, we could be back testing uh, this level down here at 33,300 as well. So. Uh, watch that uh, where we're going. So, uh, yeah, some moves, gold, uh, pounds, cable, says Pepperstone, uh, sell euro. Well, we'll see. I don't know. We just said sell euro, euro uh, continues. That's four hours down. It all depends. You know, if you're just jumping in on the uh, without any idea of uh, any system, any strategy, just on the NFP number, you often get caught out because the volatility is massive and it's you know sometimes it's an excuse for some of the big players in the bank some of the market makers to offload positions to deliberately move prices up before delivery move just test the water see what the reaction is like this is the um let me just leave this this is the five minute chart guys okay so it's now six it's now sorry 1400 hours so we're now 30 minutes after them after the event and look at the volatility so but you know now we've had all these you know six candles plot what's the what's the bias the bias is that the euro is moving up against the dollar, so the dollar is weakening. So the initial, uh, what looked like a headline, perhaps you know the the the, the market is now 
seeing that ah oh, actually yeah uh, the uh, uh, just based on the dollar move I don't know if there's been any euro news or anything I don't think Mrs Miss Lagarde said anything of any significance uh, in her question and answer session she was up but maybe she has I don't know but basically you know the bias remains to the upside so here again it's a very uh, it's a difficult one to do but you know if you were trading this strategy on the five minute time frame. That would have triggered a long a buy there all the way down from where we were so it's just whether you'd have had um the nows not necessarily the nows or the 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 the, uh, the, the strength of uh, belief to actually open a position here and you know follow the rules because the stop loss would have had to be down here somewhere and on the five minute chats a big big stop loss isn't it but you would have still been you'd have still been long because we'd have gone up up we've gone down and down so you'd have still been in you know even now you'd start to perhaps bring your stop loss up a wee bit i wouldn't have had it. i would personally if i was trading this i wouldn't have had it much below this level at the moment that that candle there at um, quarter past two uh so sort of around here at 18 sort of 25 level as we start to move up so now the trend you know the last 15 minutes we started to move up so there's a bit of thought process we've just rolled over the hour as well so the the, the out those hour candles would have complete so you know any automated system that's trading this on the uh, the basis of just wait till the candles complete that's a big hour candle isn't it so they would have perhaps triggered long there so we've got a bit of a follow through in the last couple of minutes uh to euro so euro's actually moved to the upside so um there we go that's what happens my friend uh prosper saying gold we've just had a look we've had a look at gold a lot uh we'll do it again i don't see i don't know how many of you guys are still this is a long time ago i'm sorry if you're still here, uh, uh, um, no limit. <laughs> the, probably the most astute, astute comment today. I'll come to you in a minute, my friend. Uh, Prosper said about gold. So gold, as we've seen the dollar weakening, we see gold holding up. So again, gold had a big old shakeout, very, very significant shakeout. 1750, remember, we were tested earlier in the week here on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, we uh, recovered to close up on Wednesday. Thursday was still below Tuesday's open. And today we've opened higher. So this little channel here we've been in is moving to the upside. So 17.95, that four-hour top from earlier last week. We need to break over that if this is going to break out of this, this channel here we've been in uh, since really uh, midsummer's day here on um, the winter solstice if you're in the southern hemisphere. So 17.95, let's break over there. We can move higher. Then we'll be resistance is 18 or, 18 or 7. And then the 200 period moving average for the four hour traders is at 1817 uh remember tuesdays and wednesdays we were quite volatile uh for the gold market and that's what happened this tuesday we had a big old sell-off uh, and we've moved up wednesday thursday and we're up again today as the dollar weakens it's again what well, dollars had a good run lots of profit being taken presumably on that move so see what we go from there forward says uh please guys wait for the market sell after nfp related it really is Idle considering the fluctuate. That's very astute comment as well. And no limit is also saying uh, wait for the market. Say absolutely. Uh, the difficulty. I mean, I know a lot of people say about trading the NFP. It's the most volatile event of the uh, of, of the month, and it gives you, you know, you can make loads and loads of pips. Well, more importantly, you can lose loads and loads of pips as well. So you've got to be careful. Do wait for the bias to work out. And just because the bias in the five, five minute and fifteen minute is working out. Uh, to the benefit of the euro dollar, i.e. euro going up, dollar going down, you know, again, as, as an end of day trader, you know, you're, you're just waiting. Again, he's not the end of day trader. The guy's going to come in from work on a Friday night and see where the dollar's finished. Not really interested. It's interesting what the NFP number is doing. But as far as his daily candle's concerned, he's not interested until the daily candle is complete. Just like the four hour trader, you know, if he's, if he's interested in non farm payroll, uh he's uh you know on this this chart here it's uh the, the candle started at one o'clock not 12 o'clock so i was going to say it's just finished but uh on this particular setup it's 1300 hours to um uh, 1700 hours so again he's sort of he's been long anyway he the four hour trader here he was long yesterday as it moved into the top half of the bollinger man but really that's 1795 there for gold is what he'd be looking for uh, it might be take some profit there because that's the resistance. We might have, to have a bit of a downturn, but we've got a strong current four hour candle there on, on gold. So anyway, there we go. Uh, forward, I'm going to a good point. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you got points. <laughs> good point. Right, lots of questions still. So I apologize for being late. So NASDAQ, NASDAQ, like uh, S&P, new all time highs again this week. 
Uh, have I got a Nasdaq chart? I'm not sure I have. Uh, I thought I had a sure I checked one earlier. Uh, I, I definitely had one earlier because I knew someone who was going to ask about Nasdaq. And now live on I, I cannot find it, but that's life, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, USA 100. Let's uh, it's got the cash one. USA 100. Where is he? Uh, let's uh, use that one. There it is. So USA 100. Uh, bid to the upside. Uh, let's, the, let's got the daily. You can see that's very, very clearly. You know, another great trending. If you're a trend following trader, um, somebody was asking me early today about Richard Dorchan. Who's who's Richard Dorchan? Richard Dorchan was like the, the father of trend following traders, and he, his little channels are typically based on the, uh, the, the, the a twenty day high and a twenty day low. So uh, if we put the Dorchan, I don't know if we can. I don't know if I've got that. I don't think I have. But anyway. Moving average is a, you know, part of that base as well. And again, that's another one that's just trending higher. The highs are getting higher. The lows are getting higher. Don't freak out about it. Don't get too uptight. It can't go any higher. Yes, it can. Highs can go higher. Lows can go lower. So as a trend following end of day trader, you're still long this. You might have added your position. I don't know how you've traded this in, but you've trailed your stop loss up. Stop loss would probably be around there, somewhere like there now, 14.355, maybe, if you want to get, you know, what's that, one, two, three, four, five candles behind. You might want to be a bit more conservative down there. Or you can see there's a bit of a resistance there, a bit further behind the 20-day moving average there at 4.183. The point is, the trend is going up. Um, um, uh, who's asking about this? I'm uh, It's just going up. So... Uh, that's the higher time frame. The trend, the upper uh, um, um, daily, the higher time frame, a big support there at the 20 day moving average, the middle of the bond. So that's 4 2. Let's call it 4,200 for the sake of argument. The four hour, there we are, supports all the way down there. It's dipped a wee bit this morning, waiting on. But again, big strong candle now, breaking out of that, that resistance, that sort of resistance, that range area from early in the week. Two fractal highs. We're above that now, 14,650. So it's a strong start to US, uh, well, to US futures, certainly the cash market in uh, in 25 minutes. Uh, so that's up. Looks like a strong start to uh, the month, which is typical. You know, July, um, uh, I, I put something up yesterday on Facebook, 87.6% of the time uh, uh, since uh, in the last 22 years, or less 21 years as it was before yesterday. Uh, the uh, I love these sort of statistics. Uh, the S&P 500 makes a gain on the first daily, uh, trading day of July, and it did it again yesterday. Uh, this is the Nasdaq. Uh, you know, typically, again, this is typically. It's not. It's not. You know, it's what I've found and uh, come to prove to be the case over the years. Is you know the first few trading days of each month is, is quite a strong period for equity markets and July is uh, proving no different at the moment. Obviously, bear in mind, America's closed, the United States are closed on Monday, they come back on a Tuesday, things could have happened over the weekend, things could have happened on Monday in Asia and Europe, uh, so a bit of a balance now, we, we're into the, that uh, summer season in the Western Hemisphere, uh, so things cool down a bit, vol uh, volumes go down, uh, you know, and what we've seen here, well, look at them, look at it, that's a good example of a bit of caution potentially. So Nasdaq's gone sideways, uh, then it's moved up today. This is the last four hours. So, I'm just, I'm daily. Uh, so look, the MACD is still rising, signal line still rising, big, strong uh, histograms. We go down to the four hour, you can see the signal line's rolled over and moved down uh, and obviously got a lift because of uh, the benefit of the, the weaker dollar and uh, equity markets moving up. Uh, so it's perhaps pushing off... Um, uh, what's going to go on with the Fed. But, you know, I think people have perhaps got a bit ahead of themselves, think the Fed we might be doing something over this summer season. I think, you know, very much September, October is when the action might be taken. Uh, but the talk is certainly ramping up uh, over what they're going to do. There's, there was more hawkish talk yesterday uh, from a non-voting, uh, it was Harker yesterday, wasn't it, uh, uh, talking things. But so, uh, yeah, it's, uh, again, depending on your time frame, um, Murphy, it's it's bid. You know, it's good. And it's fourteen sixty five from a four hour. It's certainly broken out. The one hour will be a bit more uh, volatile. Indeed, it was there. Good, but you can see the the one hour break there. That fourteen thousand uh, five nine five line we put in. Uh, where did we put that one in? Can't remember where we put that one in. Uh, was it the day? I can't remember. Uh, 
anyway, uh, that was a clear sort of resistance from early in the week, and we burst through that here before NFP indeed, uh, and we're in the up half, and it's moving higher, you know, stretching uh, the widening uh, bill of the mouth of the bird on our um, uh, Bollinger Band there. So uh, that's moving up uh, for our, you know, into the top daily. Where we're we going? So if we look to the weekly. We saw how strong that was, and then it's another strong week as well. So we were over last week was strong. Week before was a bit of a, a bit of a dodgy candle. Uh, new all-time highs last week. Uh, new all-time highs indeed the week before, and again new all-high new all-time highs again uh, this week. That test of the twenty hour here um, at the end of May, strong June, and we're starting July quite strongly as well. So. Um, uh, see a bit of volatility in the market, but really it's a trend uh, as, that's moving higher still. I mean, it could end very quickly, but at the moment it's stayed to the upside. Uh, bias on the USA 30. Well, I've just, I've just I did that before, didn't I? It's uh, also we did we did do it before. Yes, well, I've lost it, but uh, yeah, that remains bid to the upside. It's the daily time frame uh, bid, the four hour time frame. Uh, clearly bid, as you can see there, we're going long there, and the one hour uh, would have been bid here from yesterday, a bit choppy, would have got out, uh, stopped out there yesterday, and that's taking you long there as the NFP numbers rolled, so um, uh, the Dow 34,686 at the moment to the upside. No limit saying, uh, new highs on NASDAQ. Uh, why can't I? See? Oh, yeah. New highs on NASDAQ, but market not sell. I believe correction will come after the settle. You mean after the settle today? Remember, or, or do you mean generally the settle during the, the reaction to the um, uh, the uh, numbers? Yeah, I suppose you put that on. Yeah, you put that on 15 minutes out. But if we look at the NASDAQ, that's what you were asking about, wasn't it? Uh, the daily, you know, it's up. I'm not too fussed as an end of day trader. As a four hour trader, that's quite nice. That's a breakout. That's looking to go long on the completion of that candle. Um, and the one hour, yeah, again, uh, that would have been hefty before this happened. This big strong candle here uh, was this morning uh, taking us back out of this drift low we've had uh, generally in the week. So that's a big strong candle. Remember candle size, guys. Remember, regardless of the time frame that you're trading, the size of the body of the candle is absolutely vital. So as you can see here, that big, big body candle here from this morning at uh, the 10 o'clock candle, uh, has um, sort of anticipated a, a move up. So that's exactly what happened. So sideways for a few hours, broke over this uh, 14,600 uh, level, um, uh, again, uh, ahead of the NFP, and it's followed through in the last two hours. So that's moving uh, to the upside no limit. I hope you join that that move up. Uh, potential for NAS to go up once more market sell or potential for on Monday. Monday, remember, the US market is closed. Uh, more but we're still bid. That's that's bid and moving up. Uh, that we just said a four hour looks bid. Strong, two strong candles there. Uh, maybe looking for a bit of a correction. Uh, the uh, the one hour here RSI bit of a sign. We're at seventy two RSI at seventy two. So it's into the uh, overbought zone. But as you can see here, it can remain overbought for a long time. But it's moving up. So again. Uh, there will, there will be profit taken today, no doubt about that, because the Americans, as I say, are on a long weekend. They're not going to have risk on the table on a Friday for uh, a long weekend, what might happen uh, over the weekend or on Monday. So uh, just ride that, you know, put your target in, wherever you are, you ever provide your target. But uh, Matt D suddenly burst to life courtesy of the uh, anticipation of the uh, NFP, and it's followed through. Uh, just to say a tick sign, uh, RSI is into the overbought area. And no doubt, stochastics will be into the old ball area as well. So where we go there, uh, I feel a one eleven will become a support for an upside move because it was strong resistance on dollar yen. Indeed, it was. Uh, uh, but you know, we've had a unrelenting sort of move up for dollar yen uh, here. This is the uh, going back uh, to uh, sort of the end of April when this channel started to form, having had a big slide lower here. Uh, during uh, April, so we moved down from that high there. We'd had has we'd moved up during the first quarter. It's a good example of the volatility of the dollar. So we rallied, uh, but we couldn't get to one eleven at that time, could we? That the high there in the spring was one ten seventy. So that 
really was the resistance level. So pull your resistance down a bit of about 30 pips or so. Uh, if I just put that in there, you can see that where we had a four day resistance and then moved down quite significantly. And as we first touched that uh, 110.70 level, we bounced off it and then through it, back down through it. And then it was just literally in the last few days here on the final trading day of June, we finally burst through the uh, 110.70 level, this yellow line here, and also uh, ratcheted for the first time in a long, long time through 111. So 111 and then 110.70, the, the big um, support areas on an end of day basis. Uh, uh, Gabios, you want to be looking at for uh, dollar yen. Uh, Mehmet is saying about gold. Uh, gold, uh, again, I don't know what time frames, uh, Mehmet. We've looked at this numerous times today, but uh, that's the one I'd be looking today on the higher time frame. 1794 uh, to break this high from earlier in the week if we're going to continue to move up. Uh, end of day basis still remains very weak. Uh, although we have now moved over the five-day moving average and the nine-day moving average uh, today. So if these two cross today or on Monday, that's looking like we may be turning around or we may have found a floor and moved out of that channel, that 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 range we've been in there. But the next resistance above this 1795 here, this is, an end of, this is a day basis, is that where the 200-day moving average is there at 18, 7, 1807. So three key resistance levels. Uh, on an end of day, on a well, certainly four hour basis, the first one is there at 1794. End of day basis is the psychological 1800 itself, and then seven dollars above that. Remember that 700 pips at 18 or 779 uh, for gold. Um, I met my friend Mansoor. Uh, thank you. Well, thank you, Gabrios. No, no, Gabrios, what were you? Uh, you're asking about the daily, yeah, that's what we, Gabrios. Uh, I hope you got what we talked about before. You were right, end of day basis. Uh, one eleven dot zero zero, and then that one ten seventy zone. Let me just go back to that. Show you if you yeah that, that here's this yellow line here. One ten, well, it's actually one ten sixty six. But you know I'd round up for four four pips for the sake of uh, those four days there back in uh, beginning. And remember it's end of the month rolling over again. Interesting always happens. Uh, end of March into April. I uh, remember end of March was a uh, 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 deemed the top, and then we right, moved down for April, and then since this low here. Uh, towards the end of April, uh, around 107, uh, under 108, 107.80, we went to, didn't we? In fact, it went lower than that, didn't it? 107.46, in fact, into the, but the 107, yeah, I remember that, 107.80 was the end of day close. And then it's just ramped up from there. So we've been a nice uh, move up, uh, legging up, and we're in the channel, in the channel, in the channel. And the move of this break of 1 out of 10, 70, it's taken us over 111 to 111. Now we burst out the top of the channel uh, yesterday and coming back into the channel. So that's still okay, you know. That's still big, my friend. Uh, no, by, uh, by what no, my friend? I'm not quite sure what you mean. Sinan, hello, long time no see. Did the dollar first go up because of strong NFP release, but then down quickly because of negative unemployment rate? Why did it go up and then down? Sinan, don't overthink things, okay? Guys, don't, all of you, don't overthink things. If you're going to trade volatile uh, and news announcements, be prepared for volatility. That's the whole point. And that's what you've got to think about, you know, what some of these big players, the big banks are trying to do. Uh, you know, they're testing the market. They're not sure when the number comes out. It was a headline beating number. That should have been good for the dollar. The under, Some of the underlying data, as, 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 it, as we drilled into it, wasn't perhaps as strong. What is the impact going to be on the Fed? Well, the Fed have already indicated that they've got this hawkish tilt. Uh, the dot plots come back from 2024 into 2023. Some are talking about 2020. We had this another hawkish talk yesterday. Tapering needs to start soon. And that is where they're going to start moving. So this rally we've had in the dollar, you know, maybe cooling and it may be sort of taken on account, into account that uh, the, the, the Fed are going to move. And generally, the jobs market is quite robust. The numbers are big. Uh, but there's some issues about getting back to pre-pandemic levels. But, you know, they're still seven, uh, 850,000. What was 850,000? I forgot myself. <laughs> we talk so long. Uh, 850,000 uh, bid. That's a big top end. It's 150,000 over expectations. And, and that 750,000 earlier in the week, uh, it was around, you know, uh, five 5,000. Some would say 6,000. 6, uh, so it's at the top end. 
Uh, but it's the quality of the jobs that's being created, it's the, the earnings, the wages that these, people, these, uh, these workers are getting that's key. And remember earlier in the week, we had this, obviously ADP and NFP have been a big disconnect. We had the, the ADP number, uh, which was a, um, uh, a relative uh, miss, wasn't it? Actually, I can't uh, let me double check. Uh, I forgot off the top of my head. Uh, so the private payrolls, um, let me redo that, uh, on uh, yesterday, uh, sorry, not yesterday, on Wednesday uh, was a, uh, oh, someone come up, I can't remember, uh, uh, was a B, wasn't it, I can't remember, uh, but, uh, but the weekly claims again, the more granular number, the people claiming new unemployment, finally beat expectations for the first time in three weeks yesterday. So again, that was a positive number. That Again, that was a week, a different week to the, where, when they do this uh, the this um, uh, payroll number. Uh, so let's just refresh Facebook as well, so there's not any more questions in there. Um, oh, hello, what's happened here? Uh, down doing there's all these ethernet comments uh future direction music we talked about that any of the gold talk about imran uh gold trade yeah gold i say it moved up imran uh we talked about gold earlier so let's just come back to our friends here in facebook and uh, also so synod was saying um yeah so we had this let's just go back to the euro so this is what happens okay so let me just go back to this five minute chart to sort of explain so this volatility, that was the first five minutes. In fact, let's go down to the minute chart, okay? So this volatility here, this is 17. Can we see this? this is the euro on the one-minute chart. You can see the volatility. The initial, as the news broke, we spiked down. We spiked low to 118 or 16. So some market maker, somebody was trying to see push this to 118. Nobody wanted to push it under 118. So we moved back up very, very quickly within that minute. Uh, so the spike down was probably the uh, uh, the uh, headline grabbing attention. It's 150, it's uh, 150,000 more than I expect. That's good for the dollar. Off we went, but very very quickly within two minutes we'd retraced on the week on perhaps some of the question marks over the unemployment numbers. Uh, remember unemployment missed by it was only one tick though, uh, but the wider underemployment the U6 number was was better than expected. Uh, so we rallied a tad, rallied a tad, euro rallied to 18.56, then we dipped down. Uh, remember, this is just the one minute chart. So for the next uh, 10 minutes or so, 20 minutes or so, we moved down, but we didn't go back under this, this uh, 200 minute moving average from a technical point of view. So we moved lower. Uh, that was our support. Then we moved higher and we biased higher since then. We created a new high here uh, and we're still in the last minute, literally in the last minute, uh, sorry, last two minutes. We pushed a new high at 118.58.6. And now we've dipped, we're retracing a wee bit. So we legged up. See how what's happened here? So up, sorry, down initially, then up, then retrace a wee bit, but we're edging higher. So that again, it's not trending, but the high uh, here at uh, 16.03 was higher than the previous high we got to within five minutes of the number coming out. So that's biasing up to the upside. So the, U, the dollar is weakening here against the euro. So euro uh, going up uh, to the upside same. So that's, it's just what happens, sign. Don't try and overthink things, okay? Uh, again, if you'd have been trade, let's assume you were trading this system as an automatic system. You would have, it would have triggered you short there, here, because uh, you've been going sideways. That probably would have, triggered short there but that was literally a minute before nfp would you want to really be training it a minute before uh so you'd have moved low and then it's taken you out but since then you've gone long a uh, bit of a short out your long uh short here down down support then it's gone long you've been long all this way uh out and you're still long because you're over the 20 uh period moving average you're still long long again here you've gone up and then it's dush and that one minute one that's just triggered short now on the what this one minute chart. If you're going to trade it like that, uh, in the last minute there at uh, 118.49. Uh, it's obviously more data to come out today. There's more comments to come out today. So 
Uh, that's just what it is. But you know, as a an end, a, a one hour trader would have gone long here, and he's still long. Uh, a four hour trader uh, is still short because he hasn't. It hasn't turned out. He hasn't closed his short. In fact, because uh, uh, we've taken out there, we've gone short again there, and he's still short. He might have, you know, on the data, he might have closed it out. But the rule would be to take it out uh, above, a close above the five, the nine period moving average. So at the moment. On a four-hour period, I think somebody's commented on that uh, further down. The euro dollar here on the four-hour time frame and above, the NFP data so far hasn't changed those candles. Okay, it has in the obviously those lower time frames we've just been looking at, but the you, the four-hour remains short. Uh, we've had a good strong uh, candle because of NFP uh, euro, but euro dollar here on the four-hour remains short, and it certainly will remain look short here still on the daily time frame so you know look at the move we had down uh, a week or so ago uh, middle of june uh, the impact of non-farm payroll today on that daily candle is negative but you couldn't tell that that was a non-farm payroll deal from a volatility point of view could you at the moment obviously today is far from over uh, but it's not a big candle is it? it's not a big body candle uh, so it's maybe suggesting um, well can't tell yet because it's not finished uh, so there we go uh, so Ch I think Charlie, yes, Charlie's just commented here uh, quite rightly. Um, uh, is euro dollar still bearish or will it be bullish? Well, you tell me, Charlie. Uh, and again, it all depends on your time frame. And that's what I've just talked through. The four hour remains bullish, uh, bearish, because uh, we haven't uh, we haven't turned down. We may be finding a flaw there. You can see that one eighteen thirty eight. That's we put that on our chart earlier on, didn't we? Um, doesn't seem to it seems to have got back to there that's that as we've been dragging down all week but that still looks relatively uh, bearish okay uh, uh, I don't know what that means Kenneth what are you trying to say do the five uh, why oh, it's obviously, it's... Okay. Uh, right uh, no have I missed anything else from anybody let's have a quick look gold gold cable gold yeah anything else uh, no, uh, gold says Imran over on Facebook. There's no other comments on Facebook. Imran, you did that seven minutes ago, so let's just go back to gold then. And I'll finish with gold, and we'll go through the, the major, see what's going on. So gold, um, why is that line on there? Let's, So uh, gold today uh, is up. Um, obviously, there, that was that previous hour. We rejected uh, 1795 of oh, 1794 at a first attempt here. 1794, why 1794? Well, it was a high here. We got to on our four hour candles. So again, that would have been a, a sort of lower time frame could have taken a short there on the gold market. But here remains a bid to the upside. We trade at 17.88 at the moment. Um, and five minute, we're seeing a nice look. There we are. Five minute charts provide you a little uh, pin bar up the top there. Uh, Tweeds the top on the five minute and then it's moved down quite nicely today. Five minute trade has got a nice little profit to the downside. Uh, on that tweezer the top for gold, uh, but uh, even the five minute chart, the 20 period is sitting there at 1787.78 uh, so still relatively well bid but looking to perhaps go, uh, go to the short side but it's been had a nice move up courtesy of non-farm payroll but again it's all about you know the, the time frame that you trade obviously with non-farm payroll the short of the time frames there's lots of uh, pips available uh, but there's lots of volatility so you've got to be careful uh, you've got margin and uh, you know getting stopped out Oh, I'm getting margin call because of the massive volatility you can get uh, um, on non-farm payroll day, uh, but that's starting to move back down again now, so dollar may be coming back to life a wee bit. Uh, obviously, the issue is we've got the cash open in the United States now. Equity markets opening stronger. Uh, so look at quick open. Uh, this is the futures market, obviously, still, but there we go. That remains. This is the Dow at uh, 34,700 remains uh, bid. Uh, the Nasdaq, Nasdaq, Nasdaq is here. Nasdaq also remains bid fourteen thousand six hundred and forty-five um, uh, to the upside here on the future. So again, that's moving 
uh, to the pub site. Right, any more questions, anybody? Uh, anything else we want to have a look at uh, today? Uh, you're all done. Da, 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 da. I covered all your questions. Hope everything's gone well for you. Nothing here, nothing on. Uh, no. Nothing new on Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to call it a day, guys, if you don't mind. If there's any, if there's nothing else, uh, I'll finish with uh, <clears throat> a quick run through. So, Euro uh, remain. Let's just go back, let's go back default to one hour time frame. So, Euro uh, looks like it may have turned around, but uh, may not. Uh, strong candle to the upside, but the high time range remain uh, bearish. Dollar yen, uh, this is the, uh, again, uh, would have cooled quite significantly today. Uh, but we're still over a 111 uh, on the on the daily time frames. That key support uh, or key level is uh, 1070 and the psychological 111. Uh, uh, but the lower time frame starting to roll over four hour uh, topped at uh, this uh, 15 month high 1166 here earlier. Um, so quite a big move. Remember we had some significant moves. Uh, the Aussie, nobody's asked about the Aussie. The Aussie's uh, lost. Uh, 1.8% this week, uh, close to 2% uh, uh, to the downside. Uh, sterling, um, this is the sterling on the daily remains, you know, to the downside, 138. If it's going to move to the upside, bit of action on the four hour, some support here at 137. 37 itself. Uh, and the one hour, a bit more uh, action because of the non farm payroll. There's that 137.37 support, but the 50. Uh, period moving average at 137.86 is the resistance that we bounced off and moving back down. So some um, profit taking on the, the the NFP move, perhaps, and the dollar perhaps uh, getting some more interest. Right, uh, a couple of you just asked asked for some questions. So um, before I go, uh, Keenan, uh, no head of the curve. Keenan asked about dollar cad. Keenan is asked about pound yen. Um, yen's, as I say, it's not only weak against sterling, uh, the, the dollar is weak against uh, uh, lots of other currencies. So, um, pound uh, sterling, on the other hand, have been drifting lower during uh, June, and we continue that uh, leg, that move lower today as well. So, uh, here on the higher time frame, the daily resistance sits at the 20 day moving average at 154.10. 154.10 to the upside uh, head of the curve uh, and the uh, next level to the low side was was from uh, earlier in the week when we went to 152.80 so 152.80 is uh, the next support on the daily time frame oh, um, and then uh, this spike lower that we went to in June uh, 152.10 itself so they're the two levels on an end of day basis you want to be watching for for, K, uh, for, for the guppy uh, if we go down to the four hour, there's that test of that uh, 152 uh, uh, 80 zone. Uh, so we've moved up, and the four hour has uh, resistance at the 200 moving average there. So let's change that to oh, change the change to a dotted line. So that's our four hour resistance. Uh, 153.85, the 200 hour, which we've you know tested three hour and come back down. So that's. That's our daily uh, downside support. That's our resistance on the four hour. So we come down to the one hour time frame. The one hour time frame, you know, the big resistance is the 200 hour, but we're under the 20 hour. So the one hour uh, guppy traders uh, tried to go long there. It didn't work out. Uh, big, big resistance there. So they've been short there from nine o'clock this morning. That's not like that red line. Let's change that. Uh, or vertical line. It's a nice yellow one. So I get a yellow dotted one uh red and white candles on red line so so that has gone short this morning uh macd uh, following down uh, signal line moving lower uh rsi moving lights bounce but we've had a nice move we've tested 153.00 uh there's 153 itself let me just bring that in there. uh oh, i can't there but anyway and now we've bounced off that but that still you know some profits being taken there turned around a wee bit uh, in the NFP hour, but uh, these two would need to cross to move back up with that. So that's down and found some support in the one hour time frame. That's our daily support, 152.75. That's our one hour resistance at uh, 
153.85 is our four hour uh, support uh, resistance there, 153, that's a 200 hour. Uh, and we go back to the daily, uh, our daily 20 day moving average is all the way up there at 154 uh, to the upside. Okay, so I don't want to time frame you're trading that head of the curve, but thank you as well. Uh, Keenan, uh, dollar, hang on a minute, would you? Not dollar CAD, you want Kiwi CAD. Okay, let's, I don't have Kiwi CAD here, but uh, uh, I may have. Remember, um, for you Kiwi and your CAD traders, remember, we've had Canadian uh, data also today. Let me just double check what that came in at. Um, Canadian PMIs are out in the last, actually, it hasn't updated here, last out uh, at 5 30. PMIs have been strong this week. There have been some good, strong PMI uh, data this week. Uh, where the hell am I? Excuse my language. Uh, Friday, the th no, so I'm way ahead of myself. Uh, what's happened to my calendar? My calendar's gone mad. Uh, PMIs 56.5. So it was actual missed Canadian uh, data uh, at the moment. Uh, and uh, what was the other th there was, I thought there was some more cat data today. No. Um, no, it was a miss. Uh, miss. Um, interesting thing. Singapore PMIs are a tilt tad high. It's a funny time for that to be re released, but uh, I'm sure it's correct. Factory orders uh, from the US uh, in half an hour. Uh, but anyway, US Open, we're going down. And you asked, Keenan, you asked for uh, Kiwi. Um, what was it? Uh, Kiwi Cat. So let's just find Let's just. Uh, that's the wrong one. So Kiwi. Let me just find it up here. Uh, Kiwi, 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 Kiwi Cat. Uh, let's have a look. So, Kiwi CAD, what's going on? Let's go to daily. Daily is tilted to the downside. It's the daily. I'm guessing you're not talking about the daily time frame, Keenan, or are you? I don't know what time frame. But anyway, uh, we're under the 20-day moving average, generally moving lower. Uh, the daily support uh, from earlier uh, at the end of June is there at 83, 86.30. And we've tested that on Wednesday. We tested it again today, interestingly. Um See how that's, you know, support there. That's the end of June. Let's put the, uh, the I like the period separate, so I'll get a feel for where I am with that one. So end of June, so that was our June, you know, test. Our intraday low was much lower than that, wasn't it? A big spike lower we went to all the way down there in June. So our June low is 80, dot 85.97. Dot 85.97 is our low. Our end of day low for June and also intraday low. So interesting is it's a big downtrend we've had. So that's a key 86.30 sort of low, which we've tested today, interestingly. So again, I don't know what time frame you're trading now, but that's the daily. You can see that's that's still biasing lower. No, no question about that. But there's a bit of a flat bottom perhaps forming at 86.30. So is this key support? Are we going to move up from here? But at the moment, there's no sign of that if we zoom that up a wee bit so we need to break uh if this support is going to hold here at 86 30 we need to break over that for me and significant see how we broke it but it's the 20 day moving average so we need to break over 86 86 70 basically so just to round numbers up again so that's our resistance 86 70 that's our support 86 30 uh, and that's the range we're in at the moment on a daily, on an end of day basis. So the four hour might show a bit more activity. Indeed, it hasn't. So there we go. We've got sellers here at the top and buyers down here. The four hour support is a bit higher, obviously. We've got the four hour, uh, where's my candle? There's my, there we go. So the four hour support is a bit higher than that at 86, uh, 40, 86, 39. So 86, 30 day. 86.40 uh, for the four hour traders, and your one hour trader uh, would be uh, ooh, much choppier. Let's have a look at this. So, again, it's been affected. Perhaps, uh, yeah, I might miss some oil number. Remember, we had uh, uh, we had uh, expectations yesterday that uh, uh, OPEC, OPEC and OPEC Plus were going to come some sort of deal to increase production, but there was a break of ranks within OPEC, which is a bit strange to be honest. Normally the, the conflicts between the OPEC plus group, Russia uh, ended, uh, principally, and the OPEC uh, group, but uh, the UAE uh, refused to go along with uh, this uh, increase of uh, 2 million barrels per day production increase for the rest of the year. So 
Uh, that got uh, U.S. oil over $75. Futures went over $76 for U.S. oil. Uh, and actually, that's helped the CAD. But CAD's um, also been under pressure against the dollar. But here against uh, the Kiwi, uh, here on the one out, very, very choppy. So uh, there's a clear resistance there. The 200 our daily, uh, sorry, 200 hour resistance there at 86.65 and very, very choppy. So that's a difficult one to call today. That was moving down quite nicely for you. Then we had this huge leap. Um, uh, this is what this, this is the one hour. So that's NFPs had given that a big old leap. So Kiwis leapt up against the weaker CAD. Uh, but still, having said all that, it's still, uh, again, whoops, let's go out. On a one-hour day, on a one-hour basis, Keenan, uh, it, it sort of buys to the downside so because those highs are lower and the lows are still lower, even though it's a huge candle to the upside. Uh, you'd want that really, I don't know what time frame you're trading with that, uh, but that's a huge positive candle taking out all that we've retraced. So if this is going to go back lower, this candle here that we're on now needs to close under these moving averages here. And and below 50% of this big up candle. So that's been quite a volatile one. I don't know what side of that you're caught or what time frame you're trading it, Keenan. Um, but certainly we went, interestingly, we went to test that daily support there at uh, uh, what, at 86.30 uh, from uh, on Tuesday as well. So uh, I hope you're the right side of that move, Keenan, my friend, because it's very, that's got very choppy today. Uh, that was moving down and they all got gobbled up uh, so that's, you know, although those highs are lower and the lows are lower, it may be found big support. So the one hour support is there at 86.40 uh, basis today. Uh, and that's a huge candle. So you would say that might need to move up. What you'd want to do if this is going to go to the high, it needs to break over 86.64. Uh, then your next resistance is 86.66, just a few pips high. And that's when that 200 hour comes into force as well. So Quite significant resistance just there at 86.68, uh, 86.64 number. Uh, Keenan saying he's uh, <coughs> weekly daily for it. Okay, so you're not interested in this. Uh, what's going on down here? So let's just go. Let's go to the other extreme. Let's go to the weekly then. So the weekly remains a week. <laughs> uh, we got there's that daily support we talked about there, 86.30, and that uh, spike lower we had. Uh, last week to 85.9, so 86 itself. So the weekly remains biased to the downside. Uh, the 20 week and the 200 week are coalescing there at 88.35. So the weekly's down. The daily uh, remains down. As we said, that's that uh, 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 area there, but it's still biased lower. But we got support at 86.30, I said it earlier. And your, other your lower time frame was the four hour, and the four hour also remains uh, sort of bias to the downside, but sort of perhaps testing. So, um, yeah, I don't know what, what time frame you're, you're holding as a trader, but that relatively uh, a week still ish. <laughs> if you see what I mean, you know, I can't say much because look, the, uh, the, uh, oh, we can see that the 20, the nine, and the five EMAs are still, as you can see from the rejection of that 8670 here. Uh, yesterday, we're still biased lower. Still, it's still they're still nicely aligned. They're still moving down, uh, and um, yeah, that's what that is. We've obviously got the big spike down uh, from NFP. They haven't moved up. Now we've moved back down again. So it's still so all those for the daily still down. The weekly certainly still down, and the four hour just can't get over. The four hour needs to break over this period here. This where we are literally at the start of this. Close of the last candle, start of this candle at uh, 86 itself, break or 86, then get to 86.70 if it's going to move to the upside. Otherwise, the bias remains to the downside. Okay. Uh, uh, Keenan, right, finally, before I go, uh, I've been here an hour and uh, 40 minutes now. I'm getting a bit tired, but I will do Kiwi for you, Keenan, for the last time. So let's finish with the Kiwi. Uh, the, uh, the New Zealanders are worried very, very much into their weekend. They're probably fast asleep now. It's uh, uh, Friday night, ain't a Saturday morning for my Kiwi friends and colleagues. And uh, oh, let's, let's just bring a new one on. Let's, uh, this is Kiwi Swiss, but let's you want a Kiwi dollar, didn't you? Finally, so let's do Kiwi, uh, Kiwi uh, dollar. So, Kiwi dollar, uh, let's start with a daily time frame. Let's zoom 
in a bit. Uh, like all the other crosses, uh, we've had a strong dollar. Uh, we boomed into uh, 68, 69, in fact, 69, 15. So retracing down. So the daily remains weak. Um, I'm assuming you're going to talk about the same time frames. Uh, uh, Sundar is asking, EMA settings for the Bollinger Band and two EMAs, five and ten. Uh, Sundra, no, uh, the Bollinger Band is a default setting, so it's 20 and two, the 20, uh, two deviations from the standard 20 period moving average. The yellow and blue lines are the five EMA, sorry, the nine EMA. You were close, Sundra. Uh, you love light, I like that. Um, and the five period. So it's the, the blue one is five, the yellow one is nine, and that's the 20 simple moving average. So uh, this, this strategy looks at a cross of those two moving averages uh, for a signal of a change in direction like we got here. It's obviously, it's a big, huge candle. And we also close them the 20 period, but you've got to, uh, the 20 period has got to break as well. But this, as you can see here, um, I can't draw very well, but uh, as you can see, you know, we were sideways and then it's gone down retraced and then down again so the daily remains to the downside uh here for kiwi kiwi needs to break the 20 200 days what this orange line is here at 70 20 so this big psychological dot 70 level remains key for dollar um uh dollar uh kiwi traders so 70 20 so it's a bit higher than that so if we go down the time frame so actually we got the weekly because we uh, um Kim said he was talking about uh, the weekly four hour and daily, wasn't he? The weekly is certainly uh, weak uh, and broken 72 here. Remember, we've got 73, uh, not so long ago, let's put the 73 level on. 73 is around about there. Uh, oh, it's a four, it's an MPF. Anyway, uh, so weekly is down. Uh, daily remains down. Mm, so our low, uh, that low is a bit low, it's on there. Our daily low there for June was uh, under 70 at 69.33, so significantly under 70 and significantly under 69.50. And we currently trade at 69.92, so we can't get back to 70 at the moment. The resistance is at 70.20. So four hour uh, was also still low, but that looks like, you know, because of NFP potentially, but, you know, uh, we've had a boom up in the Kiwi from this. Uh, uh, 69.50 low today, uh, and that's that would have triggered. In fact, that hasn't triggered because we've uh, it has triggered because we've crossed. Um, Sunday, if you see that's what's happened, that's the rule. You know, in this one candle here on the four hour time frame, the, the blue line has crossed above the yellow, uh, the yellow uh, candle. So the five has crossed from below to above the nine. We've also crossed over the 20, so that would have taken you uh, long. Uh, and you can use the ATR 23 pips as your initial target. So 69.92 would have been your entry, and you'll be looking for a bit more than the ATR 23 initially, uh, or two times the ATR to take that up. Um, Sundar Chang, uh, my friend. Okay. Um, Keenan, did I answer your question about what are we doing? CAD. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, Kiwi. So, Kiwi's been short here on the four hour. Finally turning long, tried to do it then, didn't have, we went short. So it's a tentative long here. Remember that the, the daily time frame is still down. So we're against the trend on the four hour. The one hour will be a bit more perky. It certainly has, <laughs> look at that. Uh, huge candle there uh, on uh, the NFP. So one hour has gone long. Uh, but again, you know, if you can see there, uh, it really needs to get uh, above that 70 level. So 70, big, big psychological level. For Kiwi uh, traders, remember there's no, uh, there won't be any, whoops, that in, uh, won't be any, actually make that a big fat run, I'll just make that, uh, make that a big thick line, so it's there when I come back next time onto this particular machine uh, at 70 for us, so 70 is absolutely key. For Kiwi traders, so that's our resistance today, we ran to it and bounced off it, so big recovery. Uh, from there. So I'm going to call it a day, guys, if you don't mind. Uh, let's have a quick recap. See if there's anybody, I've missed anybody on Facebook. Anyway, join us on Facebook. Well, oh, an hour and uh, an hour and whatever it is. An hour and 20 minutes later. So um, 10 to 5. Uh, Sunshine, uh, final question. Why don't you use Heiken Ashi Kabars? Any secret there with candlestick charts? 
I love Heiken Ashi candles. Watch my webinar on Heiken Ashi candles. I love Heiken Ashi candles. Uh, I don't know if there's a template on here, but let's just change. I think there might be actually. Let me just just to finish with you on a on a high note because I love Heiken Ashi. Here's my Heiken Ashi setup. Heiken, the beauty of Heiken Ashi, everybody, is it's it's an average price. Okay. Uh, Keenan, final question: Where is support for Kiwi? Let's just. Um, well, actually, let's just do that, Kim. Let's just put the Heiken Ash. Let's answer two questions at once. Sunjas has asked about Heiken Ash. You've asked about support for the Kiwi. Keenan, uh, where's support for Kiwi? So here, again, Keenan, depends on your time frame. The support on the one hour is here today. There's that, you know, we haven't been able to close over 69, 69.52. That's the one hour, depending on your on your time frames. Uh, but that's the one hour support today. The four hour is around about there as well. So that's a key support, 69.50 50 line uh, moving up. Uh, and the daily support, well, really the daily support is obviously below that at 69.30 and then 69.10 from the spike lower uh, for uh, some reason. But let's just do what uh, Sunjan asked about templates. So if we add the uh, Heiken Ashi, this is my Heiken Ashi setup. There we go. So Heiken Ashi was lo is short. There we go. It's it's gone from white, and it's been short for uh, or the buy. So the, the, the beauty of Heikenashi, or, or one of the issues with Heike, sorry, the beauty of Heikenashi is quite simple. You know, the red means short, white means long. So here, this would have gone short. It's gone from you've got your first heads up that day. It was still white, but big wick to the north, big wick to the south, a big doji candle. Following day, it was definitely red. That's short, short, short. It's less short, basically, but the average is still to the downside on a daily basis. For how you can actually four hour, uh, more choppy, obviously. So this is uh, been short, then it's gone huge, huge, huge. How you can actually big in big uh, um, uh, uh, imbalance, big width to the south, to the north. Sorry, big width to the south, and now we've gone long here. That's definitely a long here on the average on the four hour okay one hour you know obviously the impact of uh, nfp huge uh, so again it been moving lower um so again now that's gone long uh, in fact that went long or stopped going short here that was a you know it could have gone long there at, at three o'clock uh, if you wanted to play it that way but so there we go let's take a question for you right guys i'm gonna go uh take care everyone uh, we'll see you uh, again next week. We're into the full first training week of July. Not a great deal of data next week. We've got the RBA uh, rate announcement. No particular surprises there. Uh, read Andrea's uh, week ahead post on our analysis page. Uh, we've got the Fed Minutes, which is probably the key event. We've also got some sort of policy review outlook chatter, chatter, chatter from the ECB and also from the Fed. And we've also got the G20 next week, which is more chatter 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 but watch the fed and watch the hawks on the fed see if they get a bit more uh, uh what's the word a bit more uh, uh, announcements on the media on the back of this uh, nfp number so uh, let's just finish with um actually let's just finish because i'm exhausted so take care everyone and uh, we'll see you all again uh next time all the best